Hey folks, Zuski Films here. Today I'd like to do a follow-up video on one I did a few years ago on how to bleed your brakes and ABS system on an R1200GS. I got uh, several questions and comments I thought I'd incorporate into this video and basically answer those questions and also maybe show some of the, the good feedback that we got from some of the viewers. All right, so I'm not gonna go through the entire brake bleed and ABS bleed process here. I made another video for that, so I'll put a link either up here in one of the cards and then also in the description below. So click on either of those links to view that video in its entirety. All right, so the things that we're gonna cover today are number one, which calipers do we bleed first? Number two, what is the GS911 unit used for exactly? Number three, do we actually need to bleed the ABS unit? Number four, if we do bleed the ABS unit, which brake levers do we press during that process? All right, and then I'm gonna end with a couple of tips that I learned from some of the viewers that uh, gave some feedback and comments, so stay tuned to the end of the video for that. We've got lots to cover, let's get started now. All right, so the first question is, which caliper do you bleed first? And on the R1200GS, you have two calipers in the front and one caliper in the back. The two calipers in the front are fed by one reservoir that sits on the handlebar. And you always wanna bleed the caliper that's furthest away from the brake reservoir. So on this bike, it's gonna be the left caliper. So you do that one first, and then you do the right caliper. All right, so the second question I wanna answer is, what is the GS911 unit and what does it do? Well, the GS911 connects to the CAN bus on your system and gives you access to a variety of functions. I'm not gonna go through all those functions here, uh, but I will put a link to their website in the description below so you can check that out and read through all the different things that it will do. But a couple examples might be setting the date and time, resetting the service reminder, or activating the ABS pump, which is what I wanna do here in order to bleed the brake. So the only, only other way to activate the ABS pump uh, that I'm aware of is to do it while you're out on the street riding and pressing down on those brakes very hard to try to lock them up. So that's obviously not a situation that you can use to bleed your brakes. So this gives you the ability to, uh, to access that ABS pump uh, during the bleeding process. All right, so now comes the actual question of, do you need to bleed the ABS unit when you're doing a brake bleed and flush? Some people will say no, that you only need to bleed the ABS unit when you're replacing the unit itself, or if you're replacing or changing out the, the brake lines connected to the ABS unit. So for me personally, I like to bleed out the ABS unit when I'm doing a brake bleed and flush, just to be sure that if there are any air bubbles sitting in the ABS unit, I get them bled out. I don't want to be riding the bike and need the ABS brakes to work to only find out that they're soft or have air in them and I don't mind spending a few minutes right now to, to take care of that. So if you're interested in learning more about how ABS brakes work, I'm going to put a link up here and one down in the description on a video I found on YouTube. It does a great job of explaining how it works. All right, so the last set of questions I want to answer are which brake lever should be pressed during the ABS bleed process and should the bleeder valves be open or closed during this process? So the first part of that answer is on the R1200GS there is one ABS unit but two separate circuits, one for the front brake and one for the back brake. So in that case you want to press both the front and the rear brake during the ABS bleed process. The other option is to press just the front brake lever during the first ABS bleed and then only the rear brake during the second ABS bleed. So either option will work. The second part of that question is should the brake bleeder valves be open or closed during this ABS bleed process? So the answer to that based on the research I've done is the only time you need to open up the brake bleeder valves during the ABS bleed process is if you were to replace the ABS unit or brake lines connected to the ABS unit. So if you're only bleeding and flushing the brake lines, you do not need to open up the bleeder valves during the ABS flush. You can leave them closed. Obviously, you want to keep them open during the mechanical bleeding and flushing of the brake line. But during the ABS bleed process, you can leave those valves closed. 
All right, let's recap the entire process now. First, we're going to do a mechanical brake fluid flush on the front wheel. And we're going to start with the left caliper followed by the right caliper. Then we're going to do the rear caliper. That will be followed by the first ABS bleed. And we got to connect the GS911 first, turn the ABS pump on, and then we're going to pull both the front and the rear brake levers three times. And during each pull, we're going to hold it for two seconds. After that, we're going to do another mechanical brake fluid flush on the front wheel. Again, left caliper first, then right caliper, followed by the rear caliper. And then we're going to follow that with the second ABS bleed. And that second ABS bleed, we got to turn the ABS pump on once again. And then we're going to pull both the front and the rear brake levers at the same time three times. And during each time we pull it in, we're going to hold it for two seconds. And then finally, we're going to end with a third mechanical brake fluid flush. Again, the front wheel, we'll start with the left caliper, then the right caliper, and then that's followed by the rear caliper. And after that, we are finished. All right, so I'd like to end this video with a couple of final tips. And before I get into that, if you're finding this video is helpful, please consider hitting the like button and subscribing to my channel. I would certainly appreciate that. All right, so tip number one, before starting the mechanical brake fluid flush, what you can do is take a syringe and suck out as much of the old brake fluid from the reservoir and then fill it up with fresh uh, brake fluid. And what you do is you'll save some time because you're not gonna be flushing all of the old fluid through the line. All right, I'd like to share one last tip with you and it's gonna serve two different purposes. Number one, it's gonna bleed off any final small amounts of air that might be in the brake line. And then number two, it's gonna allow us to do a leak check at the bleeder valves. And what we're gonna do is we're going to take a wire tie and we're gonna pull in the brake lever, both the front and the rear, and we're gonna wire tie it so it's in the closed or pulled position. And then we're gonna let it sit for at least overnight. If you can let it sit for two or three days, that's even better. And that's gonna allow for a nice, firm, responsive brake feel. If the feel is soft, then you probably need to bleed the brakes again. All right, I'm gonna wrap it up here. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to watch the original video where I go through the entire brake fluid flush and ABS bleed process. I also go through how to install the speed bleeders to make the whole brake fluid bleeding and flushing process easier. Ride safe and peace out.